Yo, what is going on, everybody? My name is Alan. This is Project Elevate, and today I want to talk to you guys about on-ball defense, and that is just an interesting little subject, and, um, you know, it's debatable whether you should play on-ball defense, whether it's just kind of dumb and old headish to play on-ball defense, um, but I think there's some very good reasons to do so, and I think you should be able to to know some of the principles to do it in order to get a well, more well-rounded game and just an overall more fun experience. All right, so first thing is first is why would you even want to play on-ball defense? Isn't it just easier to sit in the corner and just let the computer play overpowered defense for you? Well, <laughs> sometimes it could seem like that, but let's go into some of the reasons why you should play on-ball defense, and that's I feel that good on-ball defense limits um, erratic defensive rotations. Um, a lot of rotations happen. A lot of like random players leaving their man happens because you're just way, way out of position. And somebody kind of like detects like, yo, that man is open. So they kind of leave and dive to the paint to try to prevent those backdoor cuts or whatever. Um, so that's something that can be prevented by just playing on-ball defense. And um, another thing is that it's a lot more impactful on shot contests. I see a lot of people being like, oh man, these guys are just like making all these kind of like heavy contests and this and that. And personally, I don't see that very often. Does it happen every once in a while? Does it happen in the real NBA? Yes, it does. Guys hit crazy contested shots, uh, you know, and that's just part of the game. So that's okay. But I think the, the percentage of it goes way, way down when you're actually manually contesting rather than letting the CPU contest for you. Um, so that's another good reason. Um, and then another thing is good on-ball defense is much less predictable to beat than CPU defense. There's certain patterns that I know, even the best defenders in the game, your Scottie Pippins, your Kawhis, there's certain moves that I know I'm going to get by them almost every time. And that's going to cause havoc when you're playing against a, a you know, a savvy offensive player. Um, they're going to just be able to beat those patterns. They're used to beating those patterns. They get off-balled all day long. They're used to beating it. Sometimes you could throw people off by actually learning sound defensive principles and playing on-ball defense. All right, so we covered the why. Um, but should you play on ball defense? And the answer is probably not all the time. There's something you can get into if you're trying to play on ball defense all the time and you're just switching as soon as a pass is made, you're always in this reactive state chasing the ball. It's not a good way to play defense. Um, I probably play on ball defense more than I should. Almost all the time I'm playing on ball and that's just because it's more fun to me. The toxicity of stuff, what should be and shouldn't be done. That's not, I'm not here to make that type of judgment, but I think that it's you know, having that tool in your bag as far as being able to clamp down on ball um, is a super valuable way, a great way to mix things up, even if you want to still bait lanes and you're used to doing it that way. Okay, this kind of leads into our off ball rotations uh, really necessary. And yes, absolutely. You have to understand how to rotate, how to play lanes, how to cut off offensive player on ball. And then once that threat is kind of neutralized and he's kind of like stuck in a corner, switch to see oh you know you can't be focused and locked in you have to be surveying what's going on on the rest of the floor so you can prevent those outlet passes all right so let's talk about settings real quick on um, visual feedback settings team communication sets of offense and defense the defensive communication is really important if you ever played in real life you know defensive communication is key calling out switches calling out go under go over help what, whatever it may be in real life that's super super important and in 2k the setting is here it's off by default um, but if you switch it on um, during like offline plays it'll stay on offline every online game you got to go into it and switch it on fortunately so it doesn't save there but it's it's valuable i like to use it um, especially for calling out switches seeing when like my teammates are expecting me to switch they're gonna switch whatever it may be um sometimes you got to make those rotations on your own to deal with that all right so this isn't a settings video but some settings do help i'm gonna briefly go over some of the ones that i, I touch on a regular basis usually on ball pressure i said to smother or on ball i'm um, just on the switch i want to be already kind of close in position i want to be scrambling so i want them to to switch to to get pretty tight depending on matchups it'll be smother or um or tight i'm off ball pressure sometimes i leave on automatic um sometimes deny sometimes tight Again, depending on the game plan, the play style, there are a lot of kickouts, then it's going to be a lot of, a lot of deny and no help. If uh, it's more driving oriented, it's going to be automatic or tight. And um, then this uh, drive help rules will be kept on automatic or to uh, no help at all. Uh, depending on, again, their play style, if it's a lot of drive and kick, making corners drop type of deal, then this stays to no help. And then it's more pressure on me to play good on ball defense. Uh, transition defense, I also uh, like to set to no threes to take away those transition three-pointers as much as possible. You can get real deep as far as your, your strategies and game plans. 
The important thing here is going to be to be cohesive and, you know, not have settings. Understand what you're doing so that your your settings don't conflict with one another. But that's that's a whole another video, a different different type of topic. All right. So let's jump into some footage just um, against the CPU to show some basic principles. And then we'll break down some clips of online play and kind of walk you through the mental process and why certain things work. All right. So let's jump into some of the controls, basic controls. And really, the, the main things I want to talk about here are Moving up the defensive movement, we have our defensive stance, obviously, which allows you to kind of shuffle your feet. If you uh, played basketball in real life, you know that you want to be in defensive stance. You want to be shuffling. You don't want those feet to be crossing over like that. And then the other thing is that you want to play angles. Uh, you want to cut off angles. You want to get to the point where you're anticipating where your, your uh, offensive player is going to go to cutting it off rather than kind of like chasing him to it so don't try to beat him to to this spot here when he when he's driving sideways go off to an angle to beat him to a different spot okay the other big big thing and this is just kind of a mentality a total mental thing that's gonna if you're not thinking about this way you're doing it the wrong way um, you never want to be reactive to what they're doing you want to herd them to where you want them to go okay let me say that one more time you don't want to be reactive to what they're doing. You want to herd them to where you want them to go. So you want to be aware of where your teammates are helping from, where it's most congested on the floor, and you want to give them that side. So I want to be here. In this case, I want to be on this side to force him to go towards everybody else. That way there's an opportunity for help defense, for him to kind of run into other people. I don't want to give them this side of the floor that's completely open. That just doesn't make any sense. So shade him to one side and dictate where you want them to go by that. You want to essentially, you want to bait them into driving into traffic. That way your help defense can kick in in the right situations. Another huge principle is that turbo is your enemy. Um, you don't really want to use that, that right trigger very often. When you're kind of sliding around, you want to cut them off to the spot or you want to like burst and tap. You never want to just kind of hold and be in this kind of chase down animation. That's where you're all over the place and you're just getting cooked. Quick bursts, get to a spot. Um, whenever they're changing directions and you're holding turbo, you're not gonna be able to recover. So stay off of that turbo and try to get into the position of where you think they're going. Anticipate those angles, use those angles to your advantage to play solid on body. Okay, so this is just against the CPU, but the principles that you're gonna be using on, on defense, uh, for on-ball defense, they have to kind of be ingrained in your head. So when you're playing offline, get into the habit of practicing your on-ball defense. The movements, the patterns are gonna be different online, and there is different things you gotta strategize for online versus offline. Uh, but start getting used to the hurting behavior, start used to getting, getting used to the mechanics, of defensive stancing, laying off the turbo. Those types of things have to be kind of ingrained into your, your play style. Um, so that you can execute them online when there's a little bit more pressure, a little bit more on the line. Okay, so let's let's take a look at this. And again, I'm I'm shading, so I'm, I'm switching on to Ron Harper. I'm shading to this side because all the the traffic, all the congestion is to that right side of the court over there. So I'm taking him then there. I'm trying to get bumpy as quickly as possible. I don't want to give him too much space. You're not going to get called for, you know, like bodying up your your defender. Uh, for the most part so you know get bumpy driving him into traffic i mean he, he has nothing to do here but i've i've sent him on that way drive him right into pippin pippin kind of does his thing you know, helping on, on defense now as you can see here i'm here i'm still controlling pippin i don't switch every single time every single play i'm not chasing the ball like that that'll um, sometimes get you out of position where you're just kind of recovering and chasing the ball remember you don't want to react you want to herd so here I come to help just briefly with Pippin, make sure he, he knows I'm kind of there. And then I switch right over to, to Ron Harper. I'm trying to fight through that screen. So this is not like your high screen and roll type situation, but the principles still apply. I try to squeeze my way right between the, the picks. So I try to get my, my foot just right there, get bumpy, try to get that bump animation and just go over the pick. That's always gonna be your best bet. If you can fight over the pick without getting caught on it, um, obviously badges and, and stats help, um, 
but that's going to be your best bet. It's going to prevent switches. It's going to prevent weird help defense from happening. But again, I herded him into this, this uh, place situation. For one thing, by just showing with Pippen on here, it's going to tell the, the computer or even a um, human control, the offensive player, hey, like he's helping on that side. Let me go the other way. But I know I have Jordan over there, who's a good defender, long way down low, fighting over that screen. I'm contesting with hands up, so I'm not even jumping to contest. Just kind of letting him do his thing, and then Luke Longley comes in with the block. So they're just overall a solid, solid possession. Um, based on certain just like principles that are ingrained into my my mind, you know, I'm not I'm not thinking out each step as I'm doing them. They become instinctual, but you have to have a strategy. So you have to have the stick skills, but also just the mental strategy overall that you know you're going to be constantly looking for where your help defenders are coming from, where they're at, and sending them to them so that you're not just on an island every single time. Okay, so let's take a look at some online clips. Let's break them down. Um, let me kind of give you some of the insight into what I'm thinking as I'm, I'm doing this. Again, I'm usually not thinking about this each step of the way as I'm doing it. It's just ingrained and I'm kind of like reverse engineering my thought process uh, so, so I can explain it to you guys. Um, but anyway, here we go. So kick out here to uh, Diamond Bull Bull, um, switching onto Lamar Odom right away. So I'm kind of isolated there out here on the wing. And I kind of overshot it when I switched. I was turboing a little bit too much, so stay off of that turbo. He really could have had a, a nice little sidestep for, for open shot in the corner there. Um, but he kind of pump fakes. I immediately, even though I see the screen coming on that side, I recover to the side where it's wide, wide open. I have Hakeem and I have Kobe there helping in case he gets over that screen and goes around. So I'm not super, super concerned about that. What I am concerned about is giving up that baseline. He does take that. Everybody kind of slides out of the way. Hakeem is kind of containing. But I get enough in the way where I get the little bump. Try to go for that little swipe steal, which sometimes I'll get that there. When they're kind of caught up and they're turboing, that's when you're going to get those uh, steals. But I'm pretty much just containing, staying in his way, bumping up against them, and I make him pass out the ball. I switch over as the backdoor cut um, starts happening when I switch. And then immediately I'm switching back to Lamar to kind of manually contest here. He goes up for the shot and I get a 100% smothered contest on that. So overall, a just super solid um, on ball possession. Okay, so in this clip, I'm here on a ball against Zach Levine with the Lamelo ball. And right away, I'm just kind of getting into him, trying to, trying to get a little bumpy, prevent him from kind of blowing by. And I'm kind of like feathering the turbo here. So I'm kind of like tapping it, not holding it down. You can see I'm going back into defensive stance. Now, when they go into that corner, I know that my defender is going to switch onto him. So Tatum's going to pick him up. So if I go down and try to, to stay with my man at this point, um, that's where you're going to get all kinds of like either the corner dropping situation if he would have been all the way in the corner or in this case the pop-up down the middle to uh to the three-point shot now he could have dumped it there but his player is already kind of making that cup up to the top of the key so i'm going to dig down during that time while he's kind of making that cut up for a quick um you know swipe down steal and then if i don't get that then i'm going to hustle back and try to recover as jason tatum already picked him up so I come down and I end up getting that steal going the other way. All right, so here we are, Giannis and Tukumbo, Galaxy Opal Giannis against the Pink Diamond, the, uh, Lamar Odom. And again, I'm just, so watch, watch this how, how it's going. I'm not trying to meet Giannis where he's at right now. I take a little side step over to where he's going to be. So I'm, I'm using the angle that he's taking to, to cut off that angle. It's super congested here. And as you can see, I'm shading to which side am I giving him? You know, I'm giving him that corner where there's Kobe, where there's Pow down there. I'm not giving him the middle. It's an easier option for him in his mind just because he's focused on the defender that's guarding him, not looking at the help defense to, to drive down this way into congestion. Now, he makes a nice little spin move there, which I kind of anticipate. Get to, you know, get to the spot. 
get to that spot and then swipe right there for the, the strip as he's making that move. And we're going the other way. Okay, here I am. I am controlling Marcus Smart, Ruby Marcus Smart. Still uh, getting some uh, bench time minutes every once in a while. Going against uh, Galaxy Opal, Cade Cunningham, uh, one of the meta point guards at the moment. And let's just kind of like take a look at it in real time and then we'll, uh, we'll slow it down. We'll bring it back and slow it down. Okay, so right off the get-go, we're in a very spread out offense, spread out ISO situation. Um, this can be definitely dangerous. You're kind of out on the island. Um, so you got to really utilize your, uh, your positioning, your angles, cut off where they're going, and uh, anticipate, but also shade. And you can anticipate a lot easier if you're kind of giving them a direction. You know what I mean? If you're perfectly squared up and you're like, okay, choose which side you're going to go, um, then you got to guess or you're totally out of position. If you're kind of shading to one side and kind of giving them the other way, it's a lot easier to anticipate that they're actually going to take your bait in that, you know, you know, in a sense. As we go here, I'm getting into position. I'm kind of shading them to the side where, you know, Kobe's on that side. Um, I think it's Michael Bridges that's on that side as well. So he goes the other way. He gets the bump because he's trying to go through me. Gives me enough time to just recover. And he, if he would have burst a little bit more, he, he probably had a decent open lane there. Um, but that tiny little bump just kind of made him pull back a little bit to get out of the bump animation. And that gives me enough time to recover. So I kind of overcorrect a little bit, get back there. He's going down baseline. And all right, one quick point here is that I, my settings are set to not help on this drive. And I know that. So that's why I really know I got to like try to beat him to the basket. I don't really have to worry about the uh, the kick out there. If my settings weren't set like that, I would know that Tatum's probably going to drop down and I'm going to rotate to the corner. But that's what allows me to kind of do this. It's just knowing my settings and being cohesive with my settings. Most of the time, especially in 2K22 with the ease of blocks in this situation, I know I'm kind of beat here. So I'm going to take the angle more so towards the basket instead of trying to beat Cade. This is where you got to use angles to your advantages. And I'm kind of again going towards the basket, trying to time that block. And I end up getting a, as he tries to go for that little, that little layup there. Um, now smart is not going to block that many shots, but other guys like LaMelo ball or some of the bigger point guards, you can really, really bait uh, those blocks. It's one of the reasons why I used the Ron Harper for a long time early on was because I could kind of like send him to where I wanted to go, bait him for that block. And then just, you know, come, come back with a chase down and uh, utilize that aspect of the, of the defense. You know, it's not always about staying in front. You are going to get beat. It's more about making possessions tough, making them think twice about like taking that lane. If you swat them once or twice, they're going to be like, bro, okay, I can't just like spam the, the drives all the time. I got to find a different strategy. And you're kind of taking that off of their mental uh, repertoire. Um, and that way you can shrink down the possibilities of what they're going to be doing against you. Okay, so let's take a look at this possession. Now, um, he's controlling Cedric Maxwell, one of the top cards in the game at the moment. And again, I'm with Marcus Smart. This is end of possession. So the clock is in my favor. I don't have to guard for the whole shot clock here. Um, I know he's going to be rushing a little bit. And he calls for, you know the pick that i'm gonna go over i'm gonna fight over the top of it try not to get hung up on that knowing your personnel makes a difference having people with pick dodger having good attributes lateral quickness whatever is definitely going to help you get over those picks okay so what am i doing here i am shading to send him towards the side where all the traffic is going and he rejects that he tries to get to the open side of the court but because i'm already shading him i get just a super solid bump there I mean, he just pretty much runs right into me. I can get onto his side there. And right here, I'm going to swipe for the ball. Um, I was probably holding turbo a little bit too much there. Um, just trying to stay in front of him. If I would have probably eased up a little bit, maybe I get that, that steal. But you know how 2K is with the uh, on-ball steals. Sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. Um, but I'm in a position definitely where, where he's just kind of like stuck. He's trying to fight. He keeps trying to fight that way. But that's the side that I'm shading to. So it's going to be tougher to, to get over there. That slides through finally. And now at this point, he's running down. He probably took a glance at the, the clock at this point. And he's getting nowhere. We're down to two seconds. And he's going to try to kick out to Luca for the last second shot. 
which is not going to go. Um, but just solid defensive principles, um, the, the defensive mentality of shading to that that open side. Um, and he's just trying to bully his way through that. You know, it makes it a lot easier to contain than if I'm just like squared up or giving him that side. You know what I mean? Like take away something. And if they want to, they want to go the direction you're taking away. It's going to be difficult. You're going to get those bump animations. Okay, guys, this possession right here, uh, one of my, I, probably one of my more impressive um, on-ball defensive possessions. So I really want to break that down. I just showed you the, you know, the whole clip of it. Let's kind of break it down. Um, now, a lot of this is instinctual, you know, but still the, the principles are just so ingrained. So um, I'm shading to, to a side. Obviously, I'm going to give them something. I'm never going to be squared up. I'm always going to be shading to one side or the other. In this case, I'm shading him to the shorter part of the court. I have Kobe there that if he tries to squeeze by, I can maybe try to pinch. Tatum's there too, so if he kicks, there's bad spacing over there for the kickout where one guy can guard two over there. And I'm just very, this is Luca, so I know at any moment he could just pop for the shot, so I can't give him too much space. Um, but here, and I wish I had like the controller on screen so you guys could see, but you can kind of tell by the animations and also by the the you know, the little turbo cue that you get when you hit the turbo button that I'm not bursting. I'm not holding onto that, that turbo nonstop. Most of it is without turbo, especially when I'm swiping for the ball. I don't have my finger on that, that right trigger. I'm being, I'm being very like hoppy, getting to, into position, cutting off, jumping, kind of playing a cat and mouse game here with him. He's trying to kind of step back and burst to one side. But I'm not I'm not falling for it because I'm in a in a very well balanced position because I'm off of that turbo. You can see I'm still in that defensive stance. I'm making like a couple little like side shuffles, not that full on run animation you get when you're holding turbo, just a side shuffle that you get when you're just holding the defensive stand button. See there, just cutting off, and then I can recover, cutting off, just bumping, and finally he kind of gets that he gets caught up on that animation. And the ball is exposed. I hit the steal button. Ball pops loose, and we're going the other way. And in this situation, I'm actually I'm more squared up than I than I like to be. I should be shading them to the open side of the court more, so I'm sending them towards all the congestion on the left side of the court. Um, but I kind of start to get into that into that position. You can see there, he kind of beats me there. He goes for the spin, but it's into the help defense. And this is where my settings, you know, not being on tight, smothered, no help, that type of stuff are actually useful. Um, this is all dependent on play style, depending on how well, you know, how skilled they are at making corners drop and doing that type of stuff. But my help defense comes in, stops. He get, dishes out to the open man, which is the Giannis. I'm there to recover. Kicks out to Luca. I'm switching onto, onto the ball. And again, I'm already, as you can see, you kind of see there before he takes that, that first little step, I'm getting over to that side because everybody else is on the left side of the court. I don't want to give up baseline. I don't want to give up that wide open territory on the right side of the court. So I'm getting there and that kind of lets me get back and get, to get um, that little bump. As he kind of comes back right there. I mean, that could have been a steal easily. Going back into the defense. And my help settings are are kind of kicking in. The corner, that's this is a corner drop situation, but it's Giannis that it's in the corner. Um, you know, even though Giannis is capable of hitting that shot, I'm okay with that. Lamar Odom gets the you know the help defense uh, blocked there, and we get a good defensive possession. Okay, and I want to kind of retouch this because this is this is one of those like blatant corner drop situations. Everybody complains about and stuff like that he could have last minute bailed out the uh, pass to, to Giannis um hopefully in future 2ks that is not a mechanic but the defense comes over pretty uh pretty late here at this point he's kind of got a, a lane he's not fully bursting because I've been bumpy I've already kind of like made him kick out once he still has a, a decent amount of time on the, the shot clock but he's already been pestered by my defense so he knows like the drive and kick game hasn't worked in the past. So he's going to try to go up with, with Luca here. Last second, Odom kind of steps in and does his job with the defensive help. And really, it's my job with LaMelo to, uh, to pass him on to Odom and jump, jump out to that corner myself to cover that kick out. Um, this was all happening, and he's already kind of in the, the animation. Again, in this game, he could have easily kicked out, but we're pretty much already like into that block 
you know, sequence there going the other way. So not a perfect possession, but still one of the, one of the big misconceptions I think is that you got to play perfect defense or it's not worth playing on ball defense. You just got to make it a little bit tough. You got to make them work for something. You got to try to take away something to give up something that you're willing to live with. In which case, you know, in this case, I'd rather give up a, a shot to, to Giannis, which if he kicks out, you know, the way things are, um, he's probably going to take a long two anyway or drive to the basket or something like that. As you can see Giannis is already kind of like stepping into the, um, into the lane. And again, it's a situation where it's on me to, to kind of recover manually, make that rotation myself and uh, take away that kick out uh, with LaMelo ball, which I didn't do, but you know, luckily the possession went our way. All right, guys, and that is going to wrap it up for the video. I hope this was insightful. I hope it gave you a good look into the, some of the mentality of on-ball defense, why you may uh, want to on-ball defense a little bit more, um, and some of the mechanics that will be helpful in not getting uh, cooked out there. Um, so that's going to wrap it up, guys. I appreciate you guys. Uh, smash that like if you want to see more content like this. Let me know what else you guys want to want me to cover. My name is Alan. This is Project Elevates. Until next time, elevate your grind, game yourselves, and each other. Peace.